very good morning to the August gathering. On behalf of the director, Major General Sanjeev Verma, staff and students of YPS Patiala, I extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Jashinder Singh Sidhu, an old Yadavindrian of the batch of 1967. I also cordially welcome Honorable Members, Board of Governors, YPS Patiala, DGP Amar Jot Singh Gil, Colonel RPS Barar, who is also the President of IOSA, OYs of the 1967 batch, Brigadier R.S. Sidhu, and Colonel Anand Mohan Sethi, and IOSA Executive Members. Mr. J. Sidhu, as he's more fondly known, is a man that needs no introduction. He is the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Customers Bank Corp Inc. and Executive Chairman of its subsidiary, Customers Bank. His professional journey has been nothing short of inspirational. When Mr. Sidhu joined Customers Bank in 2009, the company was a $250 million asset troubled bank. However, under his able guidance, it transformed into a high performing bank providing a range of banking and lending services to small and medium-sized enterprises, professionals, and individuals. Before joining Customers Bank, Mr. Sidhu was the chairman and CEO of Sovereign Bancorp Inc. and Sovereign Bank, an organization which reached the status of a Fortune 500 company under his leadership. It is in view of his exceptional contributions to the banking, business, and philanthropic community that he is the recipient of several accolades. He was named Financial World's CEO of the Year, Turnaround Entrepreneur of the Year, Ernst & Young FinTech Entrepreneur of the Year, among many other prestigious honors. Mr. J. Sidhu was a student in YPS in the 8th and 11th grade. After passing out in 1967, he pursued a bachelor's in business management from Banaras Hindu University. At that juncture, it was the first undergraduate business course in India. Consequently, he obtained an MBA from Wilkes University. Adding to his record of accomplishments, he is also an alumni and graduate of Harvard Business School's leadership course for CEOs. As a speaker on leadership and emotional intelligence, Mr. Sidhu has attended conferences in the US, Europe, and Asia. He also helped establish the J. Sidhu School of Business and Leadership at his alma mater with the goal of it becoming a prominent center of excellence in these disciplines. Sir, it is truly a privilege to have you amongst us today. We are sure that your perseverance will be a source of inspiration for everyone present here. I now request Colonel RPS Barar to commence the proceedings of the event. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Dear students, I'm sorry I'm going to sound like a broken record stuck on an issue, and that is IOSA. I want every child to understand what IOSA is. It is an association of old students of Yadindra Public School, Patiala, of which you shall very shortly, in your own time, become members. It's very important that you remember this so that the next generation which comes benefits from this association, which is the aim today. That we got, that's why we got Jashinda here. It is going to be a continuous effort on our part, and I'm grateful to General Verma for having given us a set of topics which would interest you all, so that your horizon your thinking process gets enlarged from the experience of eminent Yadavindriyans. And so you also inspire to be an eminent Yadavindriyan and have the privilege and the honor to stand here and address alma mater students. To that end, I feel very honored and privileged of standing here and ask me why. Actually, I've told you already, because there is a very eminent Yadvindrian who, through his hard work, 
dedication and loyalty to the system has risen to glorious heights and is here to speak with you on behest of Ayosa. Again, I'm sorry, I'm repeating it. It's very important why he is here, because he wants to represent the organization you will represent. I feel doubly thrilled and honored that along with him, myself, 67 Batch, we have two other gentlemen here whose names you already spoken, Brigadier Sidhu and Colonel Anandmon Sethi, and above all, we have a senior, Mr. Amarjot Singh Gill from the Indian Police Service, who retired as the Director General Rajasthan and, sorry, DGP of Rajasthan and Director General of CRPF. Amazing feat, not easily attainable. So kindly think of these Yadavindriyans and try to emulate them so that we become a glorious institution in times to come. Like I've already repeated earlier, told you, sorry, that Ayosha shall endeavor to get such individuals to come and speak to you from time to time so that you all benefit. Before I asked Mr. Jacinda to come on stage to give his words of experience, his knowledge, and his achievements, I want you to all listen to him carefully, please. And if you have any questions, any questions of any sort, irrelevant, doesn't matter, but please be free to ask him, pick his brains so that especially the children of the class 12th can benefit from his experience. Thank you, thank you very much. Jacinda, over to you. Well, good morning, good morning future leaders of India, and perhaps future leaders of the world. It is really a pleasure for me here to be here today. And this is the place I've had an opportunity in my career to speak to students at various schools and also various universities, including Harvard, Columbia, Wharton School, uh, Stanford, and whatnot, but I am most excited to be here today because this is YPS. And hopefully you'll all be very, very proud uh, one day, and you all through IOSA, as Colonel Barad just said to you, be over here today. So my congratulations to the director, to Colonel Barad, for the Alumni Association or the old Yadvindrians Association. And if you are wondering what A stands for, does anybody know what A stands for before the, the old Yadvindrians? Anybody? This is our history. It is, yes, very good, proud of you. What is it? Agency. Agency, right. I didn't know that, okay? And I'm so sad to say that. You know, I went to YPS, I had no idea till IOSA started a WhatsApp group. And through the WhatsApp group, we opened up our eyes about the history of our institution over here. And then there is a colleague of, of, of mine in the United States who is from Lahore. And I asked her, I said, do you know about Aitchinson College? She said, oh, that's a great university. And the Maharaja of Patiala helped us with it. I said, well. I am from the sister school, Yadvindra Public School. She says, really? And there is so much of pride they have. So we, we all should be proud of the fact that our history goes back, and we are also from one of the best schools in Pakistan today. And it's the vision of our leaders and our Maharaja here to have brought that to Yadvindra Public School over here today, and never, ever forget that. That's why I admire uh, Colonel Barad and the other leaders of 
Ayosa to add uh, the, our history of Hutchinson into, into, our, uh, into our name of our alumni association. So I was so impressed with, I'm sorry I should have known, with the young lady uh, who welcomed uh, all of us over here in me. And I'm telling you, if you ever want admission and a job at any place in the United States, you got it, all right, where I can influence it. You are awesome. Look at that. Okay. You look at the confidence that she spoke, and it gives you such a pride, okay, that this is, we are not at YPS to develop just the IQ skill set, skill set or the intellectual skill set, but we are developing the whole personality. Okay, that is success. And that is what the director and their faculty are all, I'm sure, dreaming about. Okay, and this was an example over here today. Uh, when I was at YPS, I was a Mahindra House uh, day student. And, and I was given an opportunity to act in a play. I had never, ever acted in a play before, but I was asked, you know, like raising hands, who wants to do it? Because I was only here for six months in the 11th grade of ISC, and I said, I, I'll do it. You know, if nobody else will do it. And I'll tell you, I still remember the confidence, you know, everybody gets nervous when they have to speak. You know, that is the biggest fear for majority of the people, is, is fear of speaking. But at YPS, when you have to act, and you're all your, fellow friends are sitting there, and they all make fun of you. You know that. That happens. And then they, all that goes on. But that is the kind of confidence that is so critical to the overall success uh, of the, of, of your, in your life. So what I'd like to do today is that the school suggested that I speak a little bit about does it make any sense to go abroad? And does it make any sense to go to the United States for education as such? So I will definitely uh, talk a little bit about that, but I felt more important is to share with you uh, a little bit about my life experiences since I left YPS and how much of an impact they have. So hopefully it might inspire some of you to think about similar things and some of you to become the future leaders of this world. So I have two nieces who are sitting over here today, and our, their entire family is YPS, okay? So, so Nana and Gun, I asked them last, last evening, afternoon when I came, what should I talk about? And so I gave a few of my notes uh, to Nana, and she said, like this, shaking her head, this sounds good, and be yourself. Don't try to act funny, don't try to uh, be intellectual, so that's how in just a few 10, 15 minutes, here in a simple, straightforward way, are my beliefs about the top four things that matter the most for a successful professional life beyond YPS. And these are simply based upon my life's experiences, at both at YPS as well as beyond, and I hope at least some of you might find them of interest. And I have a belief that if you ever have a list of things which is more than four, the chances are you'll never ever remember them. Okay, so, so that's why it's always in threes and fours. Five is maximum. Okay, so first, to be successful in life, you must have a vision or a dream, and you must have a plan to achieve that vision. Your vision or your dream may not be just for yourself. That could be for your family, that could be for your community, that could be for your country, and, but it should be how you can be intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually much better than your parents. Okay, you are fortunate that you're sitting over here today because you come from families who gave you this opportunity. But to be successful and happy, don't be a caca. Be well beyond where you are today. And your goal should be how you can excel, not just as YPS, but also excel in being a great human being, and then also excel 
in spirit, being a great spiritual being, because if you are combining all the three, you'll be a happy human being. And happy human being is the ultimate goal of every human being. So I believe that the future is not something we just enter, but the future is something with God's grace we also can create. You must visualize and dream about this future. If you don't know what you want to do, you will only be mediocre. But if you are focused on what it is that you are striving for, the chances are you might be well beyond what your dreams are. When I graduated from YPS, I had a dream about traveling through most of Asia and Europe with the aim of promoting world peace through understanding of people. I was like you, sitting over here. I had no money, forget about passport, nothing. But I read some articles about youngsters coming from Europe, from Canada, from United States, and, and, and traveling. Those, we used to call those hippie days in those times. And they were traveling. So I said, why cannot Indians do the same thing and promote world peace? Sitting here in YPS, right? And so obviously, like I told you, I had no money. But in pursuit of that dream, opportunities arose. And after YPS, as you heard, I went to BHU to be the first graduate in the business degree program. And I, along with my roommate, found a way by finding a way to see Mrs. Indira Gandhi, actually. And that was the only way that my parents were asked to put up two equivalent of $200 in rupees at State Bank of Patiala as a security. And the government of India, with lots of sparsha, uh, finally gave us $100. So the two of us set out, and we have a nap knapsack, because my father was army. So I had a knapsack of the of the Indian Army, Pitu, you know, can there, you know, and and on that Pitu, we wrote World Peace to International Understanding. Had a flag of India on the left side and a flag of United Nations on the other side, and we successfully hitchhiked through today's hot spots like Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, then on to Turkey, Greece, Italy, Switzerland, France, England, Belgium. Holland, Germany, Austria, Yugoslavia, Albania, and back to India, all right? And we came back with $110 in our pocket, all right? So that was the best education. Why did we come back with 110 Because we also had a secondary dream, that is not to have our parents spend $200 in rupees. My father was a colonel in the army. I think he was making about 5,000 rupees a month. And that was a lot of money, even though a dollar was six rupees. So we had a passion. We cannot let, give it to our, cannot let our parents be in, in a stressful situation financially. Okay. So this we did in over a three month period so I could come back and finish my school and, and get a bachelor's degree in business management. Okay. So while I was at, uh, in Benares, I had a vision of going to United States to study, and I did not have money to even pay for the application fees. Now, why United States? So I'm a judge, brother, I mean friend. Uh, my brother was found a way through Canada to get into University of Michigan, and he was one of the top students. I was a second division student of IPS, okay? So I have nothing to be proud of, but I was a sort of a decent all-rounder. You know, decent in sports, decent in dramatics, decent in this, but didn't excel in anything. Uh, but I was passionate about whatever it is, that two or three things that I wanted to do. So he got to Michigan, and I said, I must get to the United States also. Okay, so um, I, like I said, didn't have any money. And you, at that time, there was a $20 application fee that you had to submit with every single application. So what did I do? I applied to 42 different universities who did not require an admission test because I was not a great student. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't require admission test. And I wrote a little essay, one pager, on why they will not regret admitting me to their university. That's called confidence without arrogance. 
although 41 of them thought I was arrogant, but all I needed was one. Okay. So there was a university called Wilkes University that accepted me with a full scholarship because they said, this kid perhaps is different you know, from somebody else. I don't know any of that. So to make a long story short, after I graduated from Wilkes University with my MBA, I was very fortunate to be successful and we donated a couple of million dollars back to the school and now today there is a Siddhu School of Business and Leadership in the United States. Okay, where, and, and, and I insisted that it not be a school of business. My only requirement was it be a school of leadership also. Because it is so critical, and that's why I can say to you, anybody who wants to go to the United States, if you are passionate about it, you got admission at Siddhu School of Business and Leadership, guaranteed, all right, with an I-20. You don't have to go to Canada. You know, come to the best. You know, why settle for second best? So that's how today uh, it was very. So then, professionally, uh, we set a vision to create a bank of the future. Okay, and we live, we don't live in Silicon Valley, we don't live in New York City, we live in a small town in Pennsylvania. And, and so we fortunately, in spite of tremendous odds against us and numerous failures along the way, I had my daughter uh, get passionately excited about that business also. And we had put together a small little team and uh, headed by her because she was going to Wharton School at University of Pennsylvania at that time studying business. And we built a bank which has no branches, no brick and mortar, no offices, and digitally it is helping millions of Americans educate themselves in finance. And it is a New York Stock Exchange company today. And its chief executive officer is Lavleen Sidhu. Okay. So it's an example of if you are passionate about it, the sky is the limit. Yes, you need luck. Yes, you need God's grace. But God, in, in my humble opinion, usually really helps those who help themselves and have a dream. So there are always numerous obstacles along the way. And from time to time, things, at least to me, looked hopeless. And I'm sure you will experience that too in your life. But persistence and drive to achieve the vision fortunately does prevail, and those who never, ever give up will prevail. I'm sure some, many of, some of you have studied American history also, but I want to share with you a little bit about someone who uh, has really inspired uh, uh, me in, in the study of, of history of the United States. So he had a vision to make a difference in America. And he thought the way to do that would be first start businesses. Every business he started, and two of them was documented, they failed. Then he thought he'd get into politics. He, defeated, he was defeated in every local election and every statewide elections two times. Then tragedy struck. He lost both of his children. Then he st stood for election in the United States Congress and Senate, and he lost five times. He wanted to become the vice president of the United States. At that time, there was a separate election. He was defeated. But he never, ever gave up. He was driven by his passion. Some of you may, may, may be able to relate to this. He, his name was Abraham Lincoln the most successful president of the United States of America and a great leader in this world who is admired. Okay. That is the, I, the kind of passion that I ask that all of you give it a thought. Okay. You must have a vision for your personal and your professional life, and you must pursue that vision with passion. 
you must have a vision that makes you, like I stated earlier, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually better than your parents. I know that is the desire of every teacher who is teaching you, your administrators at your school, your parents, your grandparents, their vision is to see that you, their children, are and can be better than them, both in IQ, EQ, as well from a spirituality point of view. So never ever give up and you must have a dream and a clarity. Usually in business, people ask many times, what are the secrets to success? Why is our company doing most of the time better than others? We say we are driven by focus and we are driven by clarity of our goals and pursuing them with passion. That's it. Okay, we are ordinary people who always we talk about, let's, let's put that little extra in front of ordinary and that's all it counts to be extraordinary. Okay, so. Now, now on to, the, so the first one is you must have a passion, you must have a vision, and you must be clear about it, you must set goals and never ever give up. And you will have, you, people will tell you, it's so easy for people to bring you down. Oh, come on, you'll never be, you're not good enough. My wife even tells me that today. You know, that how, can I, how could I become a chief executive officer of a Fortune 500 company? I said, thank God you're not on my board. You know, so, so it's, that's life. Okay. But you should never, ever give up. Okay. So the second belief is that true success in life comes from being emotionally and spiritually healthy or being an authentic person. I believe that you cannot be a great leader unless you're a great human being first, and you cannot be a great human being unless you're authentic. The same principles that apply to emotionally healthy families, to friendships, to authentic friendships, and to every other relationship also applies when you get out of here to be in teams and to be in businesses or to be in whatever career you choose to be. It does not matter, matter whether you wish to pursue a career in business, in government, in defense, in not-for-profit, in education, in healthcare, in entrepreneurship. Your school or college education will primarily develop your IQ skills and your overall confidence level and your overall personality, but it focuses mainly on your intellectual skill set. Your success in life, however, will be most dependent upon your emotional maturity, your communication skills, your listening skills, your empathy skills, your honesty, your integrity, your being genuine, your constantly asking for feedback, never saying, I'm okay, you're not. The moment any organization thinks they are good, they are destined to fail. Good is the enemy of progress. Never ever settle down in a team, say, we are okay. Because guess what? All you need is one who doesn't think that way and they'll beat you. Okay, that is the life of free enterprise. So I urge you to continue to develop your emotional intelligence each day. What did I do? I, when I was at Banaras, a Hindu university, I took the Dale Carnegie course. I don't know if any of you have done that. It is the best course in emotional intelligence development. I picked up a book at Knott Place, which I still have with me when I was 18 year old on how to win friends and influence people and how to stop worrying and start living. It's the best book. And it was written in the 1930s. Okay, so it's, and it's global. And today, I have another coach, and his name is Tony Robbins. I don't know if any of you have heard of that, but it's all about common sense, but common sense organized to help you. Everybody can be better. So I urge you to continue to develop yourself. And there are so many ways you can achieve this, especially in this digital world. You have access to the best information anywhere in the world, unlike what we had to do was to go to the library and go through encyclopedias and, and read magazines and articles and those kind of things. You have everything in your palm. Today you can do it. The third point I'd like to emphasize is that to have a future full of opportunities tomorrow, tomorrow exceed expectations in whatever you are doing 
today. People many times waste their careers or their professional lives or their school or college education simply complaining about their teachers or their bosses, how they are victims, and, and or they complain about their partners. Why not look inwardly? And why not excel at adapting to the opportunities you have? Why not commit to doing the best job you can do today? To be the best, if you're a best student in high school, you will get the best opportunities in college. If you are very good in, in sports and you are doing the best you can be, you will become a better all-rounder in life. If you are best in college, that will open up more career opportunities for you throughout the world. Similarly in life, be the best you can be in whatever opportunity you have in your professional life and whatever goal or vision that you've set for your life and you will get ahead. Also, if you are the best spouse, you're a best friend, you can expect if you have this attitude that you will always be, if you look inwardly rather than blaming others for your problems or your issues. So, working hard, working smart, having fun, and never ever giving up encourages a tremendously bright future. So always strive to be authentic and be the best you can be today and in everything that you are pursuing. And fourthly and lastly, become a constant lifelong learner and commit to helping others. The more you give, the more you help others, the more successful you will be. I am absolutely, this is Sikhism, what it stands for, for those of you who are there. Because it is in, bred in us to always give and to always be open to everybody who's in need. Okay? And, and the more you give, the more you will be successful. Without any doubt it happens. As Helen Keller said, you do not simply want to spend the rest of your life. You want to invest in your life. The more one learns, the more one realizes how little one knows. Let's be passionate about our hobbies and about our professions. Let's read, let's listen, let's watch, let's see the world, let's learn, let's be open. Open our brains to the limitless learning and expectations as long as we are living. That'll give us happiness, it'll give us success, it'll give us peace. I ask that the faculty and the staff do the same and not just look at teaching students at YPS, things about different subjects. As noted by the great philosopher John Ruskin, he said, education is also about teaching people uh, for about a life that is full of gratitude and a life that's full of happiness. Uh, in other words, let's help develop complete human beings to their fullest potential, not just graduating them with top numbers. We are among the most fortunate in the world to have been born, as I said earlier, in families that have given you this opportunity to come to YPS. Take it to the next level. Make a difference in the future of others you get in touch with. Do not live off your parents' success and just waste your life. Make it better than what your parents could have ever done for you. Okay. Uh, you have the potential to do anything that you want to do in this world. You must make commitment and work hard. You must use your education and your success in life, not just for yourself, like I said, but also help those still trapped in cycles of poverty and violence. Above all, never lose faith in India and its values of spirituality, its values of freedom, its values of free enterprise. It has its faults but they are for yours to fix, not to curse. Opportunities are immense for you when you are not as competitive as you possibly can be, and that is the position that economically where India is today. So you have a great life ahead of you, have a vision about your future, be authentic, be a constant learner, give back to others in need, and work hard, work smart, have fun, learn from your failures, setbacks, and take full advantage of what this wonderful world has to offer to you. And now to the question that was given to me by the director through Colonel Barad, you must 
we had just limited my scope to you got to talk about these things. So I'll address as to why does it make sense for many of you to go abroad. In my opinion, the answer to that question is what I just stated. It depends upon you. For those of you, I was with my classmates in Delhi before coming over here. And one of them is an Indian Administrative Services officer. Another one was a Lieutenant General in the retired from the Army. Another one was an entrepreneur, okay, as such. And we just sat down and, and, and talked about it. And I was the one who had chosen from that to go to America, okay. They were all successful. In my opinion, just going overseas because you are, you, that's the only way you see success is not necessarily true. Yes, the reward in the difference is, like my friend who is IAS officer said, he said, success to me was not based upon achievement. Success to me was based upon how to play in this system. I said, what do you mean? Nothing, it's, it's not results oriented. He says, no, it's not results oriented. And he was bold enough and honest enough to tell me, he said, Jashinder, if you would have been in, America, in India, you wouldn't have succeeded. Okay. And I said, that's fine. It is, what you gotta do is, if you do not believe that you can succeed in India, only then look at going abroad. But there are tremendous opportunities in India. But then if you're going abroad, be focused. Don't just say, Ji, main Canada ja, or, or uh, United States or Australia, I want to get there. No. You must say, I want to make a difference in the lives of Indians. I want to make a difference. We have employed, I, I still do that, we have employed more Indians. Okay. Why? Because we want to find a way to see if they can make a difference in the lives of few others. Okay. So what you heard uh, Colonel Barad said to you is that one day be a member of your IOSA and stand over here so that you can have an opportunity to give back and have others motivated to give back. So my bottom line is for those of you who want to go to America, like I said earlier, come and see me. We have other folks. We will do our best, guaranteed, to get you admission and to get you financial aid if that's what you need. Okay. And, and you, but don't ever give up on India. There are tremendous opportunities over here too. So, so with that, thank you very much. Good luck and God bless you all. <laughs> so, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to hopefully have you ask some questions. Okay, and then we'll have some, I'm sure you, yes. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, sir. So you mentioned that it is important to have a dream or a passion to succeed in life. But I know some of us who are unable to discover what they want to do or they don't, do not have a passion. So I wanted you to ask like, how, to how to ignite that passion in ourselves. How do we discover the passion? Okay. Thank you. That's a very, very good question, and it's something which all of us struggle with. Yes. But sir. everybody, in everything that every day is that we're talking about. My belief is that ask yourself, okay, close your eyes with a piece of paper. I'm not all digital. You know, I still write with a pen on a piece of paper. And, and think about dream, where, what, imagine. What is happiness for you? Imagine what is make having your parents be proud of you. Imagine what your teachers are teaching you today and they will say, this student excelled. Write it down. You got three ideas already, all right? And that is the beginning. Think about it. Put that in your pocket. Put that on your side table. Read it again. 
Okay. There is some truth to setting goals at the end of the year and the beginning of the year or your New Year's resolutions. And New Year's resolutions are rarely followed through. You know why? Because they make them, and they make them sometimes for us adults after we've had a drink or two, and, and, and then we forget about them. Okay. But if you go through a disciplined process, like you're building, you're like your mission. We have brigadiers over here and, you know, and army leaders sitting over here. They'll tell you that, that, that they were so determined on their strengths and imagining the strengths and weaknesses of the enemy and how do we exploit that and how do we rally the troops to achieve our mission. Same thing is in your life today. Okay, you must have a clarity of your mission. You want to give back. It could be as simple as, I want to create something that will make a major difference in the lives of 10 human beings who I see on the street begging. Okay, if that is your passion, all right, then say, what do I need to do? I need to be educated, I need to be successful, I need to have a leadership position, they need, I need to be able to fund some school, some education for them. I need to be able to provide jobs. We said, we, we had a goal, and that goal was to create one million jobs in America, or to save one million jobs. And it seemed impossible. One million? We're a darn little company, you know? Well, we went and talked to members of Congress, we went to the Small Business Administration, we went there and we kept, we just kept talking about this goal, all right? And guess what, during the pandemic, when there was a government funding coming up to help businesses, we were, we, we beat Bank of America, we beat Chase, we beat Citi in distributing money and helping small businesses retain jobs and we ended up with 1.8 million jobs. Okay, so that's how it is. Thank you, sir. Any follow-up questions? No, sir. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Please. A mic over here, please. First of all, good afternoon, sir. Sir, I had a question. Which is the best school for bachelor's and master's degree in business administration? <laughs> I can tell you uh, the best depends. But in ranking, uh, for undergraduate degrees, it's Wharton School at University of Pennsylvania is rated number one in the world today. Uh, and for master's degree, uh, Harvard Business School is rated number one today. Okay. But I applied to both those uni universities and I was rejected. All right. So, and but I had an opportunity to speak to their students and faculty, just like we're doing it over here today. So never ever give up. All right. Their quality for requirement for admission happens to be IQ skill set and your experience, which is good. Which is all. IQ skill set is measured by them by an exam called SAT for undergraduate as well as GMATs, graduate admission test for, graduate test for uh, management studies, GMATs. So I am a lousy test taker within this much of time. My strength is more so about creating the vision. I'm a strategist, creating an entrepreneur, you know, creating a vision, rallying the troops, and never giving up and getting things done, okay? So, so best is not necessarily defined by rankings. Best is defined by you as to what you want to be. And you can go to Siddhu School of Business and be smarter and more successful than a graduate of Harvard Business School. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Captain sir, so what are the lessons did you learn during your lifetime from experiences which enhanced your risk-taking ability? Uh, experiences, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the second half of your question. 
Uh, sir, what are the lessons you learned from experiences during your lifetime which enhanced your risk-taking ability? Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I asked my mother that once, and she said, you were born on the way to the hospital in a Tonga. Uh, <laughs> and, and you were, since you were a child, uh, you, you were always challenging. Uh, there was a Mr. Bakshi who was a math teacher over here, and Kadir Chawla, my friend, told me that I stood up, and I came over here to YPS from DPS, Delhi Public School. And so I stood up and told Mr. Bakshi that he could improve his method of teaching. He said, I couldn't believe that you had the nerve to tell the teacher. I said, well, you know, at DPS, they taught us this way. And I thought that was great, and I could tell him, and maybe I could have been more tactful, but darn it, you know. Uh, I'm only here for six months. I just want to learn. So li life's lessons are what I shared with you, okay, that you must be authentic. Most important is that you must be an authentic person. Imagine, dream, sit down, think about this. Who do you admire the most in your life? That could be your mother, your father, your grandmother, your teacher, your coach, your basketball, hockey coach, whatever, okay? What are their traits? They are trusting, they're always there for you, they're genuine, they were helpful to you, they listen to you, they are not arrogant, they are confident yet humble. Am I right? When you think about, has anybody wants to challenge that? Okay. So what are the life's lessons? Be a genuine, authentic human being. Be driven, but don't be arrogant. Okay, all the values, and I, I'm sorry to say this, but you know, I, I'm a Sikh, and, and I believe that in, in Sikh religion, and more, that's why I say spirituality is important. The principles, Sikh is not a religion, it's a, it's a way of life. It's about being a genuine, truthful, authentic person okay, who will always be there to help others and stand for what is right and what is truthful. Those were the best lessons I learned in life and never, ever give up. I had, unfortunately, okay, Amarjot was telling us last night a little bit about his, uh, he stood for what he thought was the right thing, okay, and he took on a chief minister of a state. Well, I had a similar experience. In the private enterprise, who's my boss? My boss was, is the board of directors, or the board of trustees, as you call it. Okay, they hire the chief executive officer, and they have an authority to fire the chief executive officer. That is their number one job. Okay. Our, chair, our chairman at that time of the board of trustees or board of directors did something which was not boundary. It was, I, I call it illegal, but let's say he did something that was not right. Okay. So I went to see him, and I said, uh, Fred, why did you do this? And let me try to understand. What, what's your motivation? And he said, you're a CEO. You are from India, <laughs> you know, and this is the way life is. I said, oh, really? I ended up being the first chief executive officer of a publicly traded company to sue his board. Okay, and we sued and we beat him, All right? It, because they never went to the court, they just got afraid when they saw our filing because it was integrity was the main thing that we stood on. That was it. And that there is no such thing as I kinda have integrity, but not quite. Oh, no, 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 no. You are either have it or you don't. You don't have kinda trusting relationship with someone. Oh, no, no, no. You either have it or you don't, all right? Those are the ones, the best soldiers, from what I learned from my dad and from my colleagues. We hire Marines in America. We hire SEALs, you know, that's because I believe in the training of the defense services, the discipline that they teach you, and that's what they teach you. Highest level of integrity, never giving up on your partner, always being mission driven, and those are some of the life's lessons, again. And stand up for his right, and never ever be scared of standing up for what you believe is right.
Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I wanted to ask, do you think you would have been as successful in India as apparently you are in the US? <laughs> yeah, very good question and answer is no. Uh, and the answer is no because as we say in uh, leadership, in professional business leadership, uh, you have to follow a couple of principles. One is what I just talked about. You have to be clear about your vision, your mission, your strategy, and your goals, and is there alignment. Number two is you've got to know about your strengths, your weaknesses, and we have an authentic self-assessment. But number three is you have to be a master of the external environment. What is the environment which is outside of your control, which influences your results and your actions? Right? That's where I would have failed in India. Okay, I have zero patience for bureaucracy and BS, right? Zero. And India is a very bureaucratic country, right? And I see my role as a chief executive officer. We had 15,000 people working for us when I was running Sovereign. And I said, my role is to, is to kill, you know, it's like, a, I don't know if you have it over here, but in US we have what's called a weed killer. It's a spray, and we just spray, and it kills the weed. I said, if I can just be like a bureaucracy killer, all right, every time you have more than two people, it's, you create bureaucracy, and you create politics. I said, if all I can do is pick, tick, 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 and kill all this bureaucracy, and we have a goal, the company will excel. Because you've got to create the biggest demotivator for an achievement-oriented person is when somebody pushes you down rather than pulls you up when you get something done, all right? And, and I could be dead wrong, but in civil service in India, like IAS type thing, what I've heard is that the bureaucracy, if you don't play the game, you are, chances are you're not gonna make it. In America, okay, playing the game is getting things done in the right way. And that's why you have 10 Indians who are chief executive officers of Fortune 500 companies today. Not Chinese, not Europeans, Indians, right? Because there is something in us. That's how I say. And I'm no longer a Fortune 500. I was fortunate to be one of the first ones ever in US, but there is something in us which are the values which our parents give to us, and that is humility, right? And always study hard, work hard, and treat people with dignity and respect. Those are the principles of leadership, okay? That's why they are leaders in America, but they may not have been leaders over here. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, what are the most important things to exceed in India, according to you? I think uh, India is a tr really a land of opportunities in the free enterprise and uh, world, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, so when you have 1.4 billion people and you have a middle class that's thriving and you have a bureaucracy that is not keeping up with the pace of the change in the world. Uh, it is up to entrepreneurs and the private enterprise to step in. Because if, the, you know, it's, it's sort of like, I give this example to my colleagues, and sometimes when we talk about things, you know, like there was a story about uh, uh, two folks who were walking in the mountains and they saw a bear, you know. And so one of them took out his, sneakers quickly and put that on. So the other guy said, you think you'll outrun the bear? He says, I don't need to outrun the bear, I just need to outrun you. You know, so, so that's why I'm putting my sneakers. That's how rat race is in the world today, all right? So we don't have to, if we can be so happy, we can just keep patting ourselves. The biggest problem of India is that we pat ourselves on the back and we are not authentic. We tell, Bharat Marki Jai, which is good, okay? But why? And how can we make ourselves better? Indians are fantastic at putting everybody down and saying how they are great. We, in US, they teach us 
Don't ever think you are great, and don't put other people down, all right? And make yourself better. If you are really great, then make yourself better. And prove it that you are better than them. Okay. So, so th that's why I would say entrepreneurship in the digital world. And something which does a lot to help small businesses expand and to help consumers uh, become financially independent. There are tremendous opportunities over here in the digital space. Okay, yes. I don't know, how much time do we have? Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. So these days, the youth is facing lack in concentration to chase their dreams. So do you have any tips to regain that, con uh, that concentration to chase the dream? Um, yes, thank you for asking that question. I'll tell you, it's not just these days. When we guys were uh, in YPS, we used to talk about these days also. That these days are difficult, and you know, our parents' days were easier, and our parents used to say, oh, Jesus, we used to ride the in a bike to the school and you guys get, you know, uh, don't have to do that kind of stuff. In my opinion, uh, you always have challenges. You always have obstacles. It is normal and natural for you to think about 10 reasons why you cannot achieve it. All you need to do is think of one that you will and then be focused in pursuing it. I gave you the example of my seeking admission at a university in the United States when I have no money. I gave you the example of traveling all over Europe and half of Asia and having no money, all right? It seemed impossible. And my mother told me, are you crazy? Then no Mars in Afghanistan, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but my dad, being an army officer, he was very much into, you gotta be driven and you gotta let the kids do what they wanna do, you know, and let them excel. That is sort of leadership, okay? And army, they teach you that sort of a thing. So my suggestion to you for your consideration would be you give it no more than one day to write down your dream. No more, because you will forget about it on the second day if you haven't done it in one day. I can tell you that. You will forget about it, all right? So you write down your dream and you take out all these negativities out of it, and all the many of the other kids could say, this fellow wants to go to be an entrepreneur, and he wants to be the next Ambani, or he wants to be this, blah, blah. just listen to it in this year, and throw it out of this one, all right? Just stay concentrated and focused on your dream, and you'll be successful. Right, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, I'll be taking a question upon the practical life. Like uh, nowadays, especially the rural area people are going abroad only to Canada and not to US that much. But uh, sir, see expense, expenses and all. Sir, I like talk to an uh, ILETS tutor and uh, she was like uh, consulting my mother that you should keep like four lakhs handy if after 10th or after 12th I have to go. And sir, like if talking about the intelligent people, like, sir, I will be referring you. It was a good luck for you that you uh, uh, you went there and you, like, perfectly handled the business. But, sir, what about those people, like, who go there and within a year come back after wasting their parents' money and not get that much success uh, successful? <coughs> well, thank you uh, for asking that. But my feelings and my opinion are we had a friend of ours yesterday you know, uh, General Bobby Garewal sit with us, and he said uh, quite a few, and he was running a, s a school or an institution to prepare folks for the defense services to join an IMA or NDA, okay? And, and he said that there were students coming from very simple, humble backgrounds 
who were succeeding in becoming and graduating from a school and becoming officers, and there were students coming from YPS or other types of schools and, and, and better family backgrounds who were dropping out. Okay? So what is the difference? It's commitment, passion, and a drive to work hard and never, ever, 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 ever give up. All right? So there are a million people coming to America every year from Mexico. All right? There are Indians who have also entered the United States from Mexico. There are people who've gone and done things which I would never expect anybody and want anybody from this institution to do, which is find illegal ways to get there. All right? You are privileged few and don't get to that level. You should have a drive. If you want to go to the United States, you should say, I want to be a doctor or an engineer or a professional or an entrepreneur or I want to work in corporate America in the corporate world. Whatever. Doesn't matter. I want to join the United States Marine Corps. There are lots of Indians who join that. You know, all that kind of stuff. Whatever it is, and you can do it. Everybody sitting over here, everybody, challenge you 10 years from now, all right, if you haven't succeeded in your dreams, let's sit and chat. Because don't, but don't give up. Don't give up. See what, what the example I gave you about President. So my suggestion would be don't follow the footpaths of losers. Follow the footpath of winners. And winners are all over the place. And yes, some people give up. Some people also have tragedies. It's, not, it's in God's hands, you know, certain times. But generally speaking, if you are passionate and willing to work hard and you don't, and you can, you're determined to find a way to get things done, you'll get things done, especially in a country like America. Sir, and I would also like to uh, ask you how challenging was it to, you know, build your own business apart from your country with all that uh, expenses? Oh, um, I uh, had no money, well, as I mentioned to you. And uh, so the way, the path that I saw was to always be willing to accept any challenge that is humanly possible. My, my motto is if it's humanly possible, give us an opportunity, we'll do it, all right? That's it. So I remember early on in my career uh, in banking business, I was a junior officer, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and our mortgage department, uh, which is the one that gives loans to people to buy homes, was really messed up. I didn't even know what mortgage was, honest to God, I don't know. So, so our president was walking by, and I said, uh, Mr. Jones, you look kind of upset today. And he said, those bastards, you know, it was like, a, uh, and they messed up, and the Federal Reserve is coming in to examine us, and he says, I can't believe how screwed up this is. So I walked away. I saw him in the back for about an hour. I said, you know, I've been thinking about your comment. I have no idea what mortgage is, but if you give me a chance, I'll report back to you within a day if it can be fixed before the Federal Reserve comes in to examine us. Okay, we got together, he said, done, done. You know, it's like, that's it, one word. And he put a little memo out, because at those days there were no emails, memo out that uh, Mr. J. Sidhu has been promoted to be the head of the mortgage division. You know, and that's it. <laughs> and oh, I said, oh my God. So, you know, you have a little certain fright. So I got together, we got a pizzas, brought in with the team. So we had a pizza party. And I said, you know, folks, we have a problem. You know all about it. How do we solve it? What can I do to help you solve it? You know, there are answers right there. People were never asked how, what's causing the problem and how do you solve it. Bosses many times simply think they are the only ones who know it and they only have to give orders. No. Leadership is listening and 
and getting people engaged and the, giving them the feeling of pride, feeling of accomplishment. That is leadership. Okay. So we got together. We were working till 12 in the night. We had different parties basically every night. We, they could do anything they wanted to do, okay, and whichever way, but we broke down our tasks into five major things that we had to accomplish. We put down who's going to do what by when, all right? And in five days, we turned it around, that the examiners came in, okay, and they gave us a satisfactory, not like wonderful. So, thank you. So, what, so what, we, what, what gave me the biggest break in career was that there was a failing bank. I think I mentioned that there was a failing bank, and, uh, and they wanted to turn it around, and nobody thought it could be turned around. And they offered an incentive that you will be given, along with your management team that you bring on, 15% of the bank if you can save it. I, we had no idea. I just talked to a couple of people, tried to learn as much as possible. And, and we had a reputation, decent reputation on Wall Street. So we were able to raise some capital, fix the, the company, and it became the 17th largest bank in the world, uh, you know, from that foundation. And, and that was called Sovereign Bank Corp, and that's what gave me, and that's what became part of Santander, all right? The, and and that was the one. How much money did I put in? Zero. How much money was given to me? Millions. But 100% of it was results-based, performance-based incentive compensation. Okay. And that is the way, so a typical good executive, so let's say 10 years from now, you've done your MBA and now you're working in a company. If you are in America, typically 30 to 100% of your pay, your compensation will be dependent upon your performance. You'll get a base salary, okay? But if you want to excel, it's all performance-based. Good and afternoon, sir. Yes. Sir, I want to ask that, sir, when you have your aim clear in front of you, but for some, sir, some feeling says that you won't be able to achieve it. And sir, how, how fast did you, uh, did you adjust in America? <laughs> Um, I think uh, pretty fast, okay? Uh, my first day in America, I was in a homeless shelter, all right? Because I got there on, on the, we have a Labor Day holiday, and Labor Day holiday is September, the first Monday of, of September. So I thought the school had told me to come on September the 4th or something like that. So I thought I'd get there on Saturday. That's better than getting there on Tuesday. And it makes sense, right? So I had my big juda and my pagadi and you know, and I'm walking and I had taken my books in the suitcase and I'm walking and I asked the people, I got off a bus and I asked the people where is Wilkes Universities and they guided me and I saw everything is closed. There was a big lock on the gate. A couple of gates, but the main gate locked. What do I do? Okay, so I asked someone and what can I do? You know, Americans are generally speaking pretty empathetic. So he said, where do you, do you have a place to stay? I said, no. I said, is there a, a place you can recommend? And he said, YMCA homeless shelter. I thanked him, all right? So he took me to the homeless shelter, which was full of old people, okay, who were abandoned by their families or they just couldn't do, and that was my first day in America, okay? After that, I w stayed in the dorm and my roommate, Jerry Alexander, was a math major, and here I am, a business major, and they just assign you. And uh, my roommate and I became best of friends, right? Uh, we listened to each other's stories. We, we just, you know, you open up to human beings. We supported each other. He taught me math. He taught me how to go to bars and how to party and how to do this. You know, that's life. That's college life in America. And, and we did all that. You've got to have experiences. Right? 
and and he took me to his home during the first and then my cousin you know he lived a couple of miles away and uh, I took the bus over to him and he says we have to cut your Judah I said who's gonna tell my mom you know <laughs> see again you have your beliefs and, and he said that's my responsibility and I said, I'm sorry, I really don't want it, da, 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 da. He said, I want you to, you can succeed, but this will get in your way, all right? And later on. So um, that's how I basically went through life, adapted. And then uh, when I was uh, hired by, uh, in a bank, this was by chance, the chairman of our board of trustees of Wilkes University, that one day I became the chairman of the trustees of Wilkes University, okay? And then he was the chairman at that time. He happened to be a banker. So he told the Dean School of Business, I'm looking for a young kid, can you recommend? And thank my lucky stars, he recommended me. And that's how I got into banking. So he hired me and I already had another job. And I told him, so he said, you're hired. I said, Mr. Jones, I already have a job. He says, I'll pay you $500 more than whatever they've offered you. I said, wow. I haven't even worked for a day yet, and I still have $500. Now, what made me confident? Okay, do enough to get jobs. It was a lot to do with YPS, and a lot to do with traveling, hitchhiking all over Europe. Because every single day, I had to make a decision. We had to make a decision. Where are we going? How are we gonna feed ourselves? How are we gonna keep ourselves safe? safe and how are we going to do it by spending no money every single day every single moment how are we going to get a hitchhike how do we how are we going to get a ride right and how do we get a visa for the next country because coming this way we had visas but going back they never gave you two entry visas right and our biggest problem was iran you know and we couldn't come back so so we found ways okay you you become a, a, a person who will constantly, like, nothing is impossible. You know, people give up and they say, oh my God, all these challenges. We became like, wow, you know, we accomplished them. So you must, that's why I ask you, do not sit on your laurels. Do not enjoy your successes of your parents. Take advantage of the successes of your parents and be better than them. Not in terms of just money or anything, no but in terms of intellect, emotional maturity, and spirituality. Those three things, and you will be happier in life, and that's how I got to justice. Thank you, sir. I think one last question. You must be hungry also. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Sir, how can we reach out to you to get in touch with you? Okay, yes. Colonel Barad here will, has all the information Please reach out, okay? Don't just send an email, send a WhatsApp message, call on WhatsApp, it's free, as you know. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and anything we can do to chat, anything we can do to help you. Plus, I feel privileged, you know, that Nana is sitting over here, Gun's over there. They can also help you reach out and they can give you their advice. They are traveling to our place in June and July this year. Uh, and come on over, visit, okay? We'll be your hosts. And, and see it for yourself. And don't listen to the people who tell you, Americans don't give you visas, Trump is horrible, blah, 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 all right? There are people who are good and there are people who are not so good. There is nobody who's perfect. Yes, we have presidents, who are not perfect, including our current president and our past ones, but they also have strengths. So, but don't let that kind of nonsense affect your passion, all right? So you want to go to America, make that your goal, and you'll make it. Okay, thank you so much.
Thank you so much, sir. Your motivational words will definitely inspire us and help us build a bright future for ourselves. I now invite the director to give the vote of thanks. Uh, students, that clap was for Hinnom or was for me? Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, YPS fraternity. And I say that because lest it only become a talk between OYs and future OYs, there is a community of teachers sitting here. Uh, welcome to each one of you because as we firmly believe that the teachers are your mentors, children, and they have gained tremendously from the talk which we've had today. Uh, sir, thank you so much for an extremely passionate talk. It was pitched at the level of the children and they really enjoyed it. I can vouch for that. The very fact that they had questions, they understood what you said. And your values which you mentioned, which are so important for the children. And children, you all know it, but coming straight from the heart from Mr. Sidhu, talking of vision, talking of passion, talking of commitment, talking of focus, talking of being authentic. You feel motivated, and thank you for motivating them, sir. And I do regret that I didn't have my class seven and eight here today, because wonderful children we have, and they also would have loved to hear your talk. But nonetheless, we have the recording, and portions we will play it for them. Because each of our children, I can commit to you, sir, and to you, the honorable members, that are very authentic children. Uh, they speak from their heart, they work from their heart, and they're truly good children. And when they hear OYs and coming forward, sir, and giving them this motivational talk and answering their questions with truth and forthrightness has done a lot of good to them. And of course, thank you, Bharat, sir, for initiating this whole process. We are just a small cob assisting you. But in the last few years, sir, since we didn't have a very good connect between each other, between two organizations, uh, we were calling the OIs, particularly from the old teachers, because the 80, the 90, and the 2000 batches, because the teachers were in connect, the teachers always remained connected with their this thing. So we had a lot of young people coming in and speaking to them and holding workshops. Uh, some of you did attend that uh, art workshop, if you all remember. But thank you once again, sir. And a big round of applause for sir for offering a scholarship to any one of you abroad. The AOSA, along with the school, will work out the modalities for the same. He's given you a commitment of, of assured admission in the school which he runs, School of Business. But besides any university where you do apply, the fraternity headed by him will be there to assist you financially. A big round of applause for that. Thank you so much. In the end, sir, so that something for your table and something for you to hold, we'd like to give you from, it's a small token, sir, but means a lot for us, and I hope it means a lot for you also. I'll just come down and give it to you. Come. Come up. Now we will give a little presentation from the YOSA side. And children, see the advantage of YOSA. Look forward to it. 
you know the office is next to your uh, MI room or uh, medical, uh, what's it called? Medical room. medical room is the ESO office. Any assistance, any help, come there, please. Gentlemen, please stand up and standing ovation, please.